Hey everybody, Matthew Oman here for AgriMedia, and I'm out here in Clark County overlooking a great field of Enlist soybeans. And what we're going to talk about today is white mold. Now it might be late to the party to be talking about white mold because normally in a video like this we would talk about scouting ahead, preparing, but what we're going to talk about today is why are we seeing white mold, especially in these drought conditions. So come along with me. Well, if you look back at the rainfall, we started getting lots of rain and heavy douses in a short period of time, starting in the month of July, between that 4th of July to mid-July, especially end of July. And then when you couple that with a lot of humidity and heat, and then you have foliage that is gonna keep that really moist and damp underneath, you basically have the perfect conditions for mushrooms, especially for the white mold. And then if you had any exposed petals that would have caught those tiny little spores, that's how you get those infections. And that's where you get the white mold damage. Because if you think about it, these soybeans put out a lot of dense canopy, right? With the big, thick leaves. So even though we're in 30 inch row, that canopy traps a lot of the moisture and prevents it from evaporating away. And that is where those white mold mushrooms would persist. Because that's the other thing that a lot of people forget is, is that white mold can persist in a field system for a decade, at least. A time capsule of yield robbing mushrooms is essentially what it is. These white mold mushrooms are very distinct and very small, like I just said. Like you gotta be up close and personal to see these things. So when you see other ones that look sort of like these, these are not coconuts. These are not white mold. That just goes to show you that if these guys could persist in the open like this, then that white mold could persist as well. Now, the other thing that we started noticing where white mold has been more prominent is not just in varieties that are more susceptible to white mold. We also notice them in high density planting. So anything that was over 140,000 pushing 160,000 all the way to 180 or 200,000, that's a dense canopy, right? The other place that we've been noticing is uh, in pen pack fields. So if they had fertilizer applied and then they also put pen pack manure down, even if the pen pack was incorporated and not just sitting on the top, that still creates ideal conditions for that mushroom to grow at a rapid pace. Because think about it, that pen pack is filled with dense material, traps a lot of moisture, and there's a lot of fertility packed in there. Thank you everybody for watching this video. If you like it, hit the little like button there down at the bottom and share this with your internet friends. And we'll catch you next time on AgriMedia.